Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Time for another vlog, I think. They tend to pop up every time I have a few thoughts on the subject and wish to vent them in some way. So, so let's talk about criticism, shall we? An interesting topic, I feel, to follow up the top five worst videos on my channel in 2012, which was a direct piece of criticism based on some of the videos that I put out last year that were, quite frankly, not up to par. Now, I often say that I'm my own worst critic, but having read the criticism I get every day, that's clearly not the case. And I don't think that anyone that actually has an audience really is their worst critic, because I don't think that unless you have had an audience at some point in the past that has direct access to you via 500 different methods on the internet, you, I don't think you really understand who the biggest critic really is. But what you can be is your most worthwhile critic. The problem with criticism is that it's very easy to actually give it, but it's very difficult to give it well. The intent of the criticism also matters an awful lot. There are some people that will go out of their way to criticize you in an attempt to upset you, in an attempt to get you riled, get some kind of reaction. I mean, it's just essentially trolling for the most part. The thing about criticism is that even if the criticism is unreasonable, then the person that responds to said criticism is more often than not criticized again for the inability to take criticism in the first place. The whole notion of taking criticism is a really odd, nebulous thing. And one has to wonder what you actually mean by it. I think it's very easy to pretend that you take criticism. In fact, it's one of the easiest things in the world to simply respond by saying thanks for your feedback and then completely ignore the actual feedback in question. That's a very easy thing to do. It's done by an awful lot of media creators, honestly, and either through force of habit or simply due to the fact that you don't want to deal with the feedback and the easiest way of shutting it down is more often than not to say thank you for the feedback, essentially pretending that you've taken the criticism on board when in reality you've ignored it completely. It's unsurprising as to why we see so much of it. And honestly, you get rewarded for that behavior. That's a very common thing online. You're seen as humble, you're seen as very mature, very grown up. If you take a piece of criticism and you simply respond by saying thanks for the feedback, even if the criticism itself happens to be a flame, questioning your sexuality, insulting your mother, and so on and so forth. It's generally treated as a very grown up way to deal with it. And honestly, I feel like it's really dodging the question, dodging the point, dodging the feedback, and just completely failing to engage with your audience when that's what you say. Because, as I said before, you could copy-paste that and suddenly everyone thinks you're wonderful and you're incredibly mature, when in reality you actually didn't do anything. And that's pandering, that's being dishonest with your audience. Now, if you want to engage with your audience, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be nice to them all the time. In fact, engaging with the audience often involves turning around and telling them that they're wrong. That's a difficult thing to do, because even though these are people that just turn up and watch videos for free on the internet, they do often feel like they have some kind of stake in the channel, and that's mostly because if they happen to be loyal subscribers and watch a lot of videos, they're actually invested in the channel doing the kind of things that they want to do. And it's not that they necessarily criticize because they want to tear down your empire or anything like that. They genuinely believe that the criticism is of value, and it's because they want to protect the channel, they want to make sure that its integrity remains intact that they provide this criticism in the first place. However, while the intention is sometimes there, the problem is that the implementation and the actual execution of the criticism can be subpar, to say the least. And there's some criticism, in fact, an awful lot of it, which is just downright useless. Now, this is a good example, actually. I'm, I'm taking some examples from a recent video that I put out, something from the Why Do I Own series. Now, when I started Why Do I Own, I did get quite a bit of criticism coming my way, but it didn't really gel with the analytics. It didn't really gel with the numbers and the views that I was seeing. Like, if we have a look at the Bad Rats video, then you've got an awful lot of likes, not so many dislikes, an awful lot of comments as well. The video was very popular. Within a couple of weeks, the video had 350,000 views. Now, that's a pretty damn good number. That's the kind of number that if a YouTube channel were to look at it and say, huh, that's a really good start, I should make more of this series, then they wouldn't be completely off base by claiming that. The second episode got 203,000 views, and that was on a game called Zombie Bolarama, and that's a game that doesn't really have the same history as Bad Rats. Bad Rats, I feel, is one of those games that's going to attract views regardless. It's the same as posting Slender on your channel. If I posted a Slender video, I know it would get loads of views. 
if I posted a Bad Rats video because that game actually has a reputation surrounding it. Or Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, for example. It's kind of low-hanging fruit, but it's pretty obvious that that would happen. Now, if you were to then have a look at Zombie Bolorama, which has absolutely no history around it whatsoever, and then Pound of Ground, you'll notice that the numbers are still really, really good. Pound of Ground only came out two days ago and has 150,000 views. That's a good number. And Zombie Bolorama came out about a week or so ago and has 200,000 views. Also a very good number. So, if you were to look at that, does it gel with the criticism that was being given in the first place to the actual series? And there were some examples of criticism, the idea that it was deliberately picking low-hanging fruit, and I'll admit Bad Rats was low-hanging fruit, but I don't think the other two were. I mean, let's be honest, none of you really knew what Pound of Ground actually was, and when it came down to Zombie Bolorama, that's a game I actually ended up quite liking. Well, it was actually a pretty good game. So... I feel that that criticism wasn't necessarily justified. It's almost like it's the same notion of doing a rage video about I want to be the guy Guy Dan. That's a really low-hanging fruit, right? And I indulged in that last year, and quite frankly, it was terrible. And I'm really, really sorry that I made it. I made that very clear in my New Year's video. So... I don't really feel that that criticism was actually justified. And there's a bunch of other stuff, and with Pound of Ground, one of the criticisms that was leveled at me was that it felt forced. That was a weird one for me, really. That was a very odd one to read, because there were a few comments to that particular effect where it said, well, you know what, you just went out of your way to bash the game. And I don't really think that's honestly the case. When you do a 35-minute video about a game that's blatantly not very good, then there really isn't an awful lot to talk about, aside from how bad it is. Yeah? You can look for positive aspects of the game, and when you don't find any, then if you want to fill in that commentary, then you've got to start talking about things that are wrong with it. And I would honestly say that Why Do I Own is a weird combination of a sort of Mystery Science Theater 3000 style presentation of a game that is really obscure, and also just a little bit of critique, and the whole point being to kind of demonstrate where these games went right or wrong, and hopefully provide some interesting reasoning. And I think I kind of did that in Pound of Ground, right? I went into it and I obviously didn't have particularly high expectations, having read the description and in the first couple of minutes noticing the whole thing was just completely littered with typos, terrible voice acting, and a really awful setting for the game. But I feel the real point of the video was to show wasted potential and the notion that the game could have been a hell of a lot more than it really was if only it had some kind of competent game mechanic in there somewhere. And the fact that they managed to screw up even the most basic of things like killing zombies is indicative that there are some serious problems in that actual game itself. But let's talk about the criticism of the video itself, shall we? This video felt forced. Well, the problem with that criticism is that it's very difficult to act on it. It doesn't really tell you why. I mean, I know the video wasn't forced. I didn't go in there with a script and I didn't go in there deliberately trying to nitpick. It's just how the video actually turned out. So I know personally that that's not the case. So if I were to look at that piece of feedback, then I can simply dismiss it because I know it's wrong. Or is it? That's the problem with opinion. You say it felt forced. And there's where the ambiguity lies. It felt forced. So the person in question is providing a criticism of the video claiming that they had this feeling that it was presented in a forced way. So what that is, is it's a criticism of the actual presentation of the video. Now, if this is a problem that's indicative with the series, which is something that should be taken seriously, bearing in mind that Bad Rats had a similar reaction from some people, and that there are a few people that also said it about Pound of Ground, then one has to wonder, is there something wrong with the way the series is being presented, and is that something that can actually be changed? Now, what you need to do in order to properly communicate that criticism is to accompany it with the reason why it felt forced. What, where did this feeling come from? Are there any specific examples? Could you point to something that was said in the video that felt overly scripted or something that felt like it was really just put there for the sake of bashing the game and the whole thing didn't feel natural as a result and it wasn't really a very good video as a result? That's constructive criticism, and that's something that is very important in pretty much all walks of life when it comes to the creation of, well, anything. And the ability to read and comprehend said constructive criticism is also a factor and a quality that is required from anyone that really makes content. 
When it comes to the internet, there's an overabundance of criticism. The problem is that there's not an overabundance of constructive criticism. And it's almost like people have the inability to give it. They don't really know what it is. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's the case. I've said for a while that I think that critical thinking should be a subject that is taught very early on in school. And every now and again, you see that in some countries it is. And the notion of the difference between objectivity and subjectivity is something that I've yammered on about until the end of time. And you know, not getting quite sick of it. But it's not taught to kids more often than not. And the, the notion is that it's possible to have an opinion about something and yet that opinion not technically be right or wrong. And in some situations, there are different problems. There are some people that are brought up to believe that opinions are essentially the be-all and end-all of everything, that you have the God-given right to express your opinion, which in many countries is true. Yes, you do. But the misconception is that that opinion is worth its weight in gold, and that as long as you've expressed it as an opinion, then the opinion is immune to criticism in and of itself, which that isn't true. If you present an opinion, then you're essentially putting something out there that is open to be criticized, especially if your opinion is a criticism to begin with. You can expect that opinion to be criticized, especially when the criticism itself isn't particularly well formulated. Now, YouTube comments are a really bad medium for criticism. They're actually terrible because you are rewarded for little jokes or short comments or parroting stupid memes that happen to be going around the place. That's what gets your thumbs up. And thumbs up is an awful system that, quite frankly, shouldn't be on YouTube. In fact, I know we could disable it. And actually, I'm thinking of doing just that on the comments and just letting the comments stand on their own rather than being voted up on the basis of who posted them, their popularity, or a wide variety of other silly reasons. You're not rewarded for providing really good constructive criticism, and it's very hard to, because 500 characters is usually not enough to really do that. But what you have to do if you want any creator, and I do mean any creator, to actually take you seriously. And make no mistake, remember what I said earlier. If someone turns around and says thank you for your feedback, it is very likely that they haven't actually taken it into account. The reason that I say that is if someone really cares about your opinion, and if someone really cares about the criticism you're providing, the chances are he's going to disagree with it. Now, why would he disagree with it? And what logic is there in that opinion that someone's going to come back and criticize your criticism and that they care about your criticism as a result? Well, for one thing, they've taken the time to respond to you. And it's not a cookie cutter response. It's not a copy paste. It is a real tailored response to something that you have said. Someone has read your opinion and has formulated a personalized response to it. They have taken the time to read, comprehend what you've said, and then reply. And it also means that the person in question who replies to it is not necessarily overly defensive. I mean, it is easy for it to be interpreted in that way. And there are, of course, times when we all get a little bit defensive about the stuff we make. It's natural to do so. You know, if you create something, you spend a lot of time in it, you put it on the internet and someone turns around and says it sucks, then yeah, you're going to be affected by that even in the smallest of ways. And maybe you turn around and say, oh, well, you know, I, I don't agree with that. Now... Saying a video sucks is, of course, absolutely useless. I mean, that is the biggest and most obvious example of absolutely worthless criticism. That's a personal opinion, but it doesn't provide any qualification. It doesn't come along with any reasoning or evidence. So if someone said, I believe this sucks because the visual fidelity at 17 minutes is affected due to the codec that you've used and the fact that you didn't encode it properly. Now, that's useful. Yeah. Yeah, he's come in and said, your video sucks, which, yeah, that's kind of like, oh, well, that's not very nice, but it's accompanied by useful information. So it doesn't really matter if it's nice or not, because you can actually use that. It's actionable information. You don't necessarily expect a lot of people to come along with information that in-depth because they don't really know. But when you come along and say, well, this video feels forced, you've got to try and explain where that feeling actually came from. And you, you know what? A lot of people can't actually do that because they were never taught to. It's something that we were taught in the first year of university, the idea that you have to be able to critically think. You must be able to identify why you believe something and then support it with evidence, logic, and reasoning. And that makes your opinion powerful. That makes your opinion hold weight, hold water, and be able to actually influence somebody because it's pretty hard to argue with an opinion backed up by a lot of evidence and fact. Like if someone comes to you with a bunch of pie charts, chances are that guy knows his stuff. I wouldn't argue with anyone who happens to have a bunch of pie charts. 
But if someone comes to you on the internet, which is a medium where expressing your opinion is very, very easy, and more often than not, in a small format like a YouTube comment box, that opinion is not really going to have a lot of weight to it or a lot of substance to it, then you can't necessarily expect for that opinion to be taken seriously immediately. A content creator is going to have a very specific idea of what they're doing. And if you turn around and say, well, I don't believe this is working the way that it should, then you kind of have to explain why, because... It's your duty, I suppose, to overcome the content creator's bias towards his own content. And everyone who makes content has a bias towards their own content. Because they wouldn't have made it if they didn't believe it was any good. Unless, of course, they were deluding themselves, which happens every now and again. In fact, it happens more than you could possibly imagine, especially on a site like YouTube, where there is nothing getting in the way of you uploading any old tosh, right? So you have to overcome the creator bias. And in doing so you need to deal with the fact that the creator's probably going to respond and say, well, I don't agree with this because of this, this, and this. And if he tells you why, instead of just telling you to sod off, then that's something you then have to deal with. And that's where the discussion starts going. And that's when really good information starts to come out. Because if your opinion is challenged, then naturally you feel the need to respond and you feel the need to defend your opinion. The only way to defend your opinion is to provide evidence, logic, and reasoning to indicate as to why you believe something. And that's when the really good information comes out. That's when the discussion becomes constructive. And this applies not just to content creation, but pretty much every gaming community and plenty of other communities on the internet that I've seen. Like, if you were to go on a forum or go on Reddit, then more often than not, you'll find some of the most popular posts are just really short, blanket statements. And for some reason, people like to upvote that stuff. Because, like, I agree with that guy. I'm going to give him an upvote. And that's really not what the system is for when it's used anywhere, even if it's on YouTube or Reddit or a myriad of other places that use a similar kind of up-down vote kind of system. That's not what that's for. And honestly, you don't get a good discussion that way because you've got to explain why you believe that. It's very, very easy to say something like, the War Z sucks and get an upvote. That's easy. That's a populist opinion. Most people agree with that opinion. That's the prevalent attitude amongst most gaming communities right now. So saying that, that's easy. Some people would describe it as so brave. But what's not easy is to describe why. And if someone turns around and says, well, why? Then you should be prepared to explain that opinion. If someone were to, say, leave a comment on a video that says, this video sucks or this video feels forced, and then the creator turns around and says, well, why can you explain that? That's not really constructive criticism. That's not something I can use. Then be prepared to provide that information. Ideally, you provide it in the first place, and then we don't really have these problems where people get all upset. But some people are going to get upset anyway. The reality of the situation is that if you say anything on the internet, then it's open to criticism. If you make criticism, then you should be prepared to receive it in kind. Now, I'm a game critic, ergo I am prepared to deal with criticism that comes my way. And I get a lot of it over a wide variety of different mediums. That's the nature of the internet. The channel's a big channel. Lots of people watch it. You become a target. And that's fine, because... To be fair, this stuff's kind of harmless. You know, someone could rage at you over Twitter, call you all manner of different names, and it doesn't actually matter. You block that guy and you just ignore him. It's no big deal. And then someone else comes along the next day, and it's just part of daily life when you're making content. It, it doesn't even matter if you do it on a small scale, because there'll be someone that comes along and says, you suck, for whatever reason. That's not a big deal. The ability to deal with people like that is actually not the same as the ability to take criticism, because taking criticism at least on a surface level, is very, very easy. As I explained earlier, you just copy-paste this response. Taking criticism should really be a sentence that is extended by one word. It's missing a word. It's actually a bit of a misnomer. Taking on criticism is the way that that phrase should actually be worded. And the reason is that you should take criticism on board, but you should also take on criticism, you should challenge it head on, when you believe the criticism isn't very good criticism, when you believe it's not based in reality, whether you believe it's badly justified or just flat out worthless because it doesn't actually back up its opinion with anything. You should tackle that criticism, you should turn around to that guy and say, why? Explain yourself. And if the guy doesn't respond, then nah. It was just some guy throwing their opinion out on the internet, and it's just so much background noise. 
that's all a lot of opinion really is on the internet, honestly. And unless you justify your opinion or you build yourself a platform, which usually you do by justifying your opinion and getting people interested in hearing it, then it doesn't really matter if you expressed an opinion on the internet or not. And I suppose that that situation's a good thing, because if everyone on the internet was always held to account for everything they ever said, then the internet would probably be a very tiring and trying place. Sometimes you just want to go and vent online. You're anonymous, it doesn't matter, you're never going to meet these people, blah blah blah. And that's fine. It, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, uh, and that's okay. It's good that people's opinions don't necessarily matter too much. Because we're also just talking about videos about video games. This is not a college moot, it's certainly not a debate club, and it's definitely not a courtroom. And thank God for that, right? Because we couldn't deal with that kind of stress. We'd rather just top ourselves than deal with that kind of nonsense every day of our lives. But it's just something to consider. It's just something to bear in mind in your daily lives. It applies very much to gaming. It applies very much to dealing with other gamers and actually having discussions, especially when you're involved in a gaming community. If you criticize an element of the game, then you need to explain why that is, because there's very likely a lot of other people in the game that actually like the thing that you dislike. So you need to start a discussion. You need to say something intelligent. You need to say something constructive, because that's when things get done. If you're constructive, as opposed to just shouting from the rooftops and sticking your fingers in your ears and saying, I'm not listening, la la la, or, you know, even worse, pretending that you're listening when in fact you're just lying to their face, then you can get something done that way. And you can make a better game. You can actually affect business practices within this industry. And you might think that that's impossible, but no, it isn't. And you can do that even on a very small scale, and you can have a positive impact on a game that you play, or a video creator that you like, or a website that you read, or a forum that you post in. It's very possible to do these things as an individual, and generally speaking, the best way to do that is to open up with constructive criticism. Be prepared at that point, once expressing your opinion, to have to actually defend it. That's the point. It's essentially one giant, dumb peer review system. You posit something, you put a hypothesis out there, and then you get peer reviewed by the entire internet. And some of them call you gay. But that's just the way of it. And let's be honest, if all your opposition can do is call you gay and insult your mother, then you just won by default. My name is Total Biscuit. thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.